Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel, Tech Lead and partner at Westport. And today we are answering again the same question that always comes at the start of a new year, which is, is PHP dead in 2022? And while you're sitting around in December or in the early stages, January, wondering whether you should be investing your time and your effort into this language, which everybody says is dying. They say it's buggy, no one's using it, everyone's upset about it, you're hearing all the hate and all that kind of stuff, and you come to YouTube, you might be a student, you might be someone who's doing development, who's deciding whether you should invest more time, or you might want be thinking about what kind of language you want to use for your next project. Now, let me give you a quick intro for those people who are new to the channel of why I know so much about PHP. As I said, I'm a tech lead. I've been doing PHP for well over six years and I've created a business well over six figures in revenue and I constantly use it every day. But that's not just the only thing about it. The main reason is that I am a pro. Now, pros are uh, you know, indifferent to what languages they make. We need to make it count. We need to make dollars and cents. So like, for example, I was using Angular and we dropped it in favor of Vue.js because I just felt it was better. I analyzed it. I looked at it. Now, PHP is a different story altogether, right? It continues to be a very, very strong language. So 2022, I'm going to give reasons why PHP continues to be the language of choice and why you should be investing your time to learn it. So the first reason is PHP continues to develop. What am I talking about? Now, PHP 8.1 just dropped a couple of months ago. And before that, we had 8.0 and PHP 7 about two years earlier. So you can see that there's been a continuous improvement in the language. This was not the case about three years ago when I had this video about PHP is back. I mean, PHP 6 had just taken a wrong turn and been left in the dust. But now we're back on a regular progression and you always want to go with a language that continues to progress and use some of the new features out there. So that is a very good reason why you want to be looking at PHP as a language. Now, the second reason, right, is diminishing returns of new technology. What am I talking about? Now, in the beginning, right, I used to use the latest phones all the time because it was part of my business. I was one of the first people to actually have a handphone way in 2000, I had a handphone. In 2003 or 2005, I had a um, smartphone. I was one of the earliest people with a smartphone because I wanted to use email while I was on the bus going to work, something like that. Now, fast forward to now, right? You know, I'm now using a Samsung S8. There's now Samsung S22, you know, for 22, 2022. And what I find is that the functionality and the utilization, right, is not worth upgrading. It's not worth the new amount of money that you're spending. And this also applies to a lot of technology out there. You notice that you're still using a PlayStation, you're still using an Xbox, you haven't used anything else. The reason is that there is a diminishing return as technology becomes more stable. The internet is also going through that phase. I am noticing that the new features that have come out in the last one to three years, right, haven't really changed. They're not really pushing the envelope. I think the last big one was this front end, back end idea where you have a bit of React and a bit of Vue.js, a bit of Angular, you know, that whole idea where Node.js came up into the fray. Since then, not really much has been happening. You know, we have some Python, but generally websites look like websites. <clears throat> and this is always a natural progression in technology. So a lot of you are worried about it might go the world of Perl or Cobalt or something like that, where it's no more, um, you know, relevant. This is not happening because there is a diminishing return. We're not seeing that kind of big change and therefore there's no big switch in the technology stack. At the same time, as with point one, we, PHP is evolving and continues to catch up. So that is a very important phase. Remember to think about that. Point three, right, is the huge ecosystem that has been created. And no one can doubt, you know, deny that this system, this ecosystem is there. PHP remains to be the number one way that people can actually push software onto the internet. Now, a lot of people have been saying, you know, things like, you know, Python's coming up or Node.js is coming up, 
But when you look at not just <clears throat> the languages, but the software behind it, the middleware, we call it middleware or, or you know, intermediate software. So I'm talking about the WordPress CMSs. I'm talking about the Laravels. I'm talking about the E2 frameworks. No other language has that extensive ecosystem that is out there. If you want to code in Python, maybe you've got Django, maybe you've got you know one or two other stacks that you can use, not that much range. PHP remains as one of the biggest languages on the internet. But Lionel, what about all the stats that says PHP is falling behind? It's not as dominant, those numbers you know, that you see. Now, I want to give you some caveats on this kind of stuff. The first is that a lot of these guys are always talking about new areas of uh, coding. I mean, especially Python. Not many people would use it to build a website, but they would use it for uh, machine learning or something where it's pretty strong in that area. And that kind of feeds in because PHP was such a dominant Force, uh, you know, it's gonna go lose market share. I mean, once you hit 90%, you can, you know, chances that you're gonna go down. This does not reflect the overall growth of all the people, especially, uh, I would say, non coding uh, uses of the language. I'm talking about people who install WordPress or people install, install OpenCart, one of these things. They're not really coders, they're not gonna go and stake Ogreflow on, on voice their opinions. These people are still using that language. And then you have a few of the BMOF, the big guys like Facebook, uh, Etsy, they're still down there. They're still using that kind of stuff. So again, PHP has that ecosystem. It's gonna take a long time to revive that. And especially with point two, if there's no real significant push, it's still gonna be very big in 22. Now, the last point uh, that I wanna talk about is the big one that's happening in 2022 which is the formation of the PHP Foundation, okay? The PHP Foundation was created in 2022. Now, why is this so significant to PHP? The reason is that PHP, for most of its life, has been a grassroots initiative, right? It's come out from somebody trying to make a web page, a homepage, it's evolved, it's become more mature. It never really had a big backer on the internet. And there's a reason why, because you know the internet was still very new at that point of time. You talk about 1990s, there wasn't a big you know, push behind it. Fast forward to 2022. Now, a lot of languages that you guys are hearing about, right, have this huge corporate sponsor behind them. Even though there's this big company behind them, and this is a big problem about actually promoting the language. PHP has been more or less a duct tape of volunteers. But now we are back with something very important, and that is called money, okay? PHP has formed the foundation. There's now $300,000 of cash every year to the language. It's probably gonna grow much bigger than that. But more importantly, we are finally becoming commercial and finally paying people for what they're doing. And this is a big change to the language, a big change to the future of PHP because I, you know, look, I'm a professional. Millions and millions of websites and programmers and agencies rely on PHP and we don't pay anything for it, right? So it's more or less somebody else is footing that bill. But we need this stuff. It's part of our ecosystem. So now that the foundation is being funded and there are many, about 10 different companies, I'll put them all out. There will be a separate video about this, about the foundation. These are all major companies that are going to be supporting the language because this is a huge amount of support for you who are learning the language or using it because to have an organization with money behind it, at the end of the day, money makes things go round. And these guys are gonna be supporting and pushing the language into 2022. We cannot rely on volunteers anymore. So with all these four factors, right, the future of PHP is really, really bright in 2022. If you like my channel, if you like PHP, you wanna learn more about it, you wanna learn about the latest developments, some of the latest frameworks, like and subscribe on this video and I will see you in the rest of 2022. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.